Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. If you're wondering if you need a SCOBY or starter tea in order to make kombucha, the short answer is yes. SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, and that culture is basically what's going to inoculate your sweet tea with the bacteria and yeast to turn your sweet tea into kombucha. When you break down the word symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, that culture actually lives in the liquid. So even though SCOBY technically refers to the culture that resides both in the liquid and in the pellicle, it's one of those terms that has just kind of evolved within the home brewer community, and it may not be entirely accurate, but here we are. A lot of people ask me if you can make kombucha with just sweet tea and not adding a scoby or starter tea, and the answer basically is no. Similar to sourdough, you need a little bit of the starter culture from a previous batch in order to get the next batch going and fermenting properly. This is um, one of my scoby hotels, and as you can see, there's a whole stack of um, different scobies. I've mentioned this in my other videos, but I have noted that the starter tea is actually more important than the scoby itself. So if you don't have a physical SCOBY, but you have two cups of very strong acidic starter tea kombucha, theoretically you could make a successful batch of kombucha as long as the pH of that batch drops below four. Then you'll know that it's acidifying properly and it will most likely grow a SCOBY on its own anyhow, even though you didn't have the physical cellulose SCOBY to begin with. It may not necessarily work in reverse. If you have a SCOBY mat, but you don't have a ton of starter tea, you might not have a successful kombucha batch. It probably won't acidify your brew properly enough to get that fermentation kickstarted um, and going properly. So in those cases, I think this is why a lot of websites out there actually recommend adding a little bit of distilled white vinegar to your brew to bring the pH down. I have a whole other video that covers why I don't like using distilled white vinegar in my kombucha process, but so you can check that out if you want more info. So I think there's this big fascination with the SCOBY because it's so interesting looking and because a new one grows with every batch and it's just kind of fun to see how this science project ends up growing. But really, it's the starter tea that matters more so than the SCOBY mat itself. So just to recap, you definitely need a good amount of starter tea. I like to use about two cups per gallon batch in order to brew kombucha. And without that, you're not really brewing kombucha, you're just brewing potentially moldy tea. Now, if you don't have enough starter tea and if you don't have a SCOBY to use to get your first batch going, I have a whole other video dedicated to where you can find a SCOBY and where you can get some starter tea. But if you buy a SCOBY or you don't have enough starter tea, remember that starter tea is just another word for a previously brewed batch of kombucha that's successfully gone through a first fermentation phase. So if you have access to a grocery store that sells raw, unfiltered, unflavored kombucha, you can use that to bump up the amount of starter tea that you're using for your first batch, since that basically is starter tea. If you don't have access to raw kombucha, a lot of homebrewer sites will say that you can use distilled white vinegar. I can only get behind that as a recommendation if you're really, really strapped for a uh, starter tea and you can't find it anywhere and you really are desperate to just get your kombucha going. I have a whole other video on vinegar, so be sure to check that out. Those are your options. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, be sure to check out all the other resources on youbrewkombucha.com or comment below. Happy brewing.